Okay, welcome back to the third part of this variable tutorial. So, we have our sample dialog with two conditions and one unconditioned answer. But suppose we want to show this last answer only when the first are exhausted, meaning when the first two conditions are false uh, and their answers hidden. So, what we want to do now is to create a third condition on our third answer. Again, I am in Dialogs Objects, in Dialogs Component, and on Answer I can click I can click C as Condition. And it's empty, I can click Edit and Start. And now it's time to combine two variable checks together. So I will uh, first select the first one, which is Fork01. Visit it, and let's click if it's not true. No, no, actually, the other way around, if it's true, because remember, we want to check it if it's exhausted. So we want the reverse check than we used at the given answer, right? Like, no, if you're baffled by this, think about it. Like, we are checking if that variable is true, if it's been visited. So if we are showing this answer, like the third answer, only after it's been visited, we need to make sure it's true. So, fork1 is true. Now we need to add a second variable. And now is when you have to decide between AND and OR. Your, uh, your maybe familiar operators. So AND is if you want to either two, or like you can use more than two, but in our case two, if you want both of these variables to be true, then the whole argument will be true and the whole condition will be true. Or you can use OR. Uh, and only one true variable will be sufficient for the whole condition to be true. You know, get it? So, in this case, because we want to make sure that fork1 has been visited and, you know, the answer 2 has been exhausted, we need to make sure they're both true. So, we will add 1, we will, we will, we will click AND, you know, and, and we will add uh, our integer variable and we will make sure it's, you know, greater than 1, which is 2. Because when we stop on 2, it will already hide the answer. So we want to make sure the answer is hidden. And this is the case it will be. And this will only come as true if both of those variables are true. I know there's a lot of true and false and all of that throwing around, but you know, let me show you uh, how this works very easily in the play mode. So I will return back, and I guess I will Hello. Okay, minimize it just a second so it's like more visible. There we go. I've got your email. Uh, okay, you with? If you have it. Okay, it's false now because none of those variables is true. Both of them are true, and we will first exhaust the. F and you see, the third answer is not visible, because the condition is not true. So now we can go to I love FMV games. What? You should, you know, is that a prank? Condition false. <laughs> Goodbye. Let's flip the visited variable. Now it's hidden. Now it's only, now, now it's only one answer there. So we'll go, I want to make an FMV game. Oh, that sounds fun. Our what kind of a game one. engine is that exactly? Integer variables one. Now we're back. We will click. Oh, that sounds fun. Condition is what false, kind of a game engine see, is that exactly? Down, the overall condition is true, and we have the last answer available. So, there you go. That was, you know, the basic uh, usage of variables. There's been a lot of running around, a lot of stuff that seems a little impenetrable at first, but trust me, once you get hang of it, presumably according to this tutorial, or if you try something on your own, it will be much more easier and you'll be able to build much more comprehensive, complex and interactive and shifting projects with Charles Engine. But the last thing I want to talk about are different kinds of variables you can also use. Because there are other ones, and most notably two, that you can build upon. And I'm not going to be using those in our sample projects, because that would take uh, much longer. But uh, the one thing I want to talk about is integer calculation. So, I can create a new variable by right-clicking in the project window and bringing up this menu and create a variable, an integer calculation variable. And what this does 
is that it allows us to sum or subtract some of the integer variables present in our project. Uh, the sum of them is fairly straightforward. Uh, well, you know, the size is always the number of variables we want to use, so let's put two. I've already had two of them, I can either drag and drop them, or, you know, select them through this drop-down menu, or the circle button. And what it does this way is it will uh, sum, make a sum of those two numeric variables, and then you can work with the sum however you like. You know, check it against some condition, or use it further. Or you can either use the same approach to subtract them, and then again, check them for some condition, or, you know, use them whichever way your project needs. And the second thing I want to show you is the string set, which uh, is, yeah, as straightforward as it sounds, because it is a string set. And what it does, it has a list, uh, we can, you know, manually, you know, we can either, either manually add to it, or we can dynamically add to it through the scripts, as, like, kind of a similar way we've seen, you, you know, put a simple script, and you drag and drop the string variable there, and you can, you know, uh, there's a method for, for adding into the script, uh, why, why wouldn't I show you, right? So I will just, like, you know, clean up, and I can drag and drop our strings variable there, and there, under function, I can select add item, and I can, like, you know, add something like item 1 to it, and once the script runs, it will add the item 1 in the, in, the, in, in the variable. It will look like that. And, you know, it's a list of unique strings, and it can be used for things like inventory, or the characters you've encountered throughout the game, or, you know, a, a list of facts you've learned during the story, and etc. It's something we use a lot in Sloboda 1945, actually, and, you know, that's actually kind of a trivia about Charles' engine, is that a lot of functionality that you see in the engine was actually first built as a developer tool for us. So it's like really, you know, made in accordance with the real needs of like real developers. Anyway, uh, that's been our kind of longer tutorial number two about variables, and I hope now you have like all the all the more advanced knowledge of Charles Engine you need to start creating even more interesting and much more complex projects for Charles Engine. And as always, we are super thrilled to see what you guys and gals are able to do with it. And please, if you do something in Charles Engine, do send us a link, do reach out on Twitter or, or our email or our Facebook or whenever you encounter us. And we are happy, always happy to talk about your project and uh, talk about your ways of using Charles Engine. Please, thanks so much for your attention and I'm looking forward uh, to seeing you and hearing you in the third installment of our tutorial series where we'll be talking advanced type. So, see you around and bye!